Hey guys, how's everybody doing today? <laughs> Coach Castle here, and uh, back again. So this is going to be another exercise breakdown video. So I'm going to keep trying to do these, talking about many different exercises. And uh, well, anyways, today I'm going to be doing a breakdown explaining why two particular movements, which are extremely common, are terrible and what the best choice would be instead. The best choice being the perfect exercise to target the muscle group instead of these exercises. So, both of these exercises are rows, and both are not only ineffective, but dangerously ineffective and dangerous to your health. One of these is the upright row, and the other is the bent over barbell row. Now. I know, I know, the bent over barbell row is a basic, essential, foundational movement for everyone's plan, and everyone who's a bodybuilder, and everyone who's a coach, and everybody who's an athlete, and everybody's fucking grandmother. But it is not the ideal direction of resistance for the latimus, it's not the ideal direction for the upper inner back, the middle trapezius, or the traps. It's not the best movement for anything. It loads your lower back a lot. It loads your upper back not much. It loads your lower back a lot more than it does even during a upright barbell squat. Now, that's because of levers. Again, just going to keep reminding you that this goes back to physics and anatomy. And you are not special. Physics apply to you the same way they do every other object in the world. And your anatomy is the same as every other human's anatomy. I mean, with very few exceptions. <laughs> now, remember, when you're doing a barbell squat, for example, the weight is pressing down directly on your spine towards your feet, towards the bottoms of your feet. When you're performing a bent over barbell row, the tertiary lever, or the, uh, the second active lever, your back, your upper back, those muscles don't have to lift the weight of your torso, but your lower back does have to lift those, plus the weight of the barbell. So, in reality, you're really loading the lower back much, much, much more than any other muscle group. I don't care what you think, and you're actually not even lowering, loading your lower back correctly. You're doing that inefficiently as well, because it's an isometric contraction. Now, this rowing movement that people do it works the rear deltoid more than anything else. It works the rear deltoid more than it works the lats, more than the upper back, more than the trapezius, more than all these things. Meaning, it is a very ineffective movement, very ineffective back building exercise, and also ineffective for your rear delts as well as your lower back. It's not an effective movement. <sighs> now, let's talk about upright rows. An upright row is, uh, it's a movement that looks very much like you're picking up a bucket with both hands, um, kind of holding it from your hips, and then raising it up to your chin with both of your hands. So the majority of people will ignorantly do this exercise for their shoulders, specifically for their lateral deltoids. Now, you'll notice when you watch someone doing an upright row that the upper arm is doing the same exact thing that it's doing when you're doing a side dumbbell lateral raise or a side cable raise or whatever. It doesn't matter if you're doing a lying lateral raise, a standing lateral raise, a machine assisted lateral raise, a cable lateral raise, a bent over arm lateral raise, or any other movement which involves your shoulder muscle raising your humerus. Any of these examples of this movement pattern raising the humerus with the lateral deltoid, all the same, all the same, except for efficiency. So, when you're doing a standing lateral dumbbell raise, so like this, you're doing so with a very long lever, due to the fact that your upper arm and your lower arm are forming a straight and long lever. If you do these standing lateral deltoid raises with your palm facing the ground correctly, 
you will be activating your lateral deltoid. Well, partially. This is a very ineffective movement for your lateral deltoids. It's not a good movement. It only gives you about 30 degree range of motion and efficiency. I'll get to that in a different video, but it doesn't matter. Suffice to say that it's a very long lever. So, as an example, let's say you could perform 10 reps for three sets of standing lateral deltoid raises with 10 pounds. Well, if you were uneducated or ego-driven and you wanted to look more strong and have less progress, you could very simply do what most people do and suddenly grab more weight than you're accustomed to doing, start swinging it with momentum, bending your arms. Now, as soon as you bend your arms, bend your elbows, you're shortening the lever. You're making the movement easier. In the case of the upright rows, you are completely doubling your levels over, meaning your upper arm and your lower arm have folded so that your fist and your shoulder joint are now basically lined up. So it means that any weight that you hold in your hands, the load will be significantly reduced due to the ineffective levers you're now using on top of the distorted and compromised joints. So keep it simple. The same person doing three sets of 10 pounds, lateral raises, three sets, would suddenly and magically be able to do upright rows with a barbell holding 95 pounds. No, they're not suddenly stronger, they're using ineffective mechanics and hurting themselves. So the only difference is that you just bent your arms, you internally rotated your humerus inside the shoulder socket, uh, meaning you're putting your body in a compromised position with no optimum muscle loading occurring. You're straining the infraspinatus to prevent the joint from going too far, and because you're using the secondary lever to double under the primary lever, you are reducing the load, forcing you to compensate using a lot of weight for that reduction because you're being inefficient. Now, you might think you're loading your deltoids more because you're using more weight, but you're not. Just like if you use momentum and you're swinging a 100-pound dumbbell does not mean you're loading your muscle. You'd be better off doing it slowly with a longer lever and much less weight. You also have to get rid of your ego to do that. Now this is called efficiency, as well as reducing damage to your body. So the reason somebody would rather do an upright row with 95 pounds instead of a lying lateral dumbbell raise with 5 pounds is very simple. Ego and ignorance, as well as traditional flawed bro science and logic. So, now that we have spoken about the bent over barbell row, as well as the upright row, both of which are terrible exercises, wildly inefficient and bodily damaging, the bent over barbell row, which is supposed to be working your middle trapezius, as well as your upper trapezius, in reality, as I've said, is a terrible exercise. It just strains your spine your lower back and possibly gives you a minimum benefit to your rear deltoids. The upright row, which I just discussed, which is supposed to be for your shoulders. However, it's simply a flawed exercise pattern that internally rotates them into a compromised position. Doubling your levers over is a very ineffective and damaging way. Basically, goes back to what I said earlier. If you double your levers, you are operating in an extremely compromised position using far more weight and straining your body. It's very compromising in all efficiency ways. So the results that you produce from this are obviously not going to be efficient nor productive in any way other than damaging you. Now, now we know all these things, so hopefully you'll take my advice and stop doing them because I just explained to you very easily why they're stupid exercises. Now, the good news is, if you listen up real quick, I will give you two alternatives, which are the perfect exercises in efficiency, muscle loading, strength gains, as well as efficiency of motion, and do not damage your body. They also require far less weight, which means you don't need a gym with lots of plates. Yes, you do only need two, 
considering each one of these particular movements is specifically chosen only for said targeted muscle, meaning none of the other muscles will be working, only the one you want to work. So, <clears throat> in this particular case, the two target muscles will be the uh, middle trapezius as well as the lateral deltoid. So, uh, keep it simple. Um, as I have mentioned earlier, for the lateral deltoid, you're going to want to do a lying lateral raise. So, to explain it very simple, I will include a picture afterwards, but simple explanation. Uh, to perform this exercise, you're going to uh, lie on the ground with your right elbow on the ground directly beneath your torso, uh, as if you're in the side plank position. Your head and torso will be elevated with your hips on the ground and your butt on the ground, side butt on the ground, and um, your upper arm will be parallel with the ground, resting on your hip. Your left hip will be pointing straight upwards towards the ceiling, uh, also parallel with gravity, as well as your left shoulder. Make sure you maintain this position so you optimally load the lateral deltoid. So whatever weight you use, and by the way, it should be light weight, especially if you're learning this movement, you're going to grab the dumbbell, water bottle, brick, whatever you may be using. You're going to put it in your hand with the palm facing down, resting on your leg. You're then going to begin the movement by raising your arm in a nice, perfectly straight line, keeping the dumbbell palms down in your hand. Keep your arm locked, meaning your elbow is straight. This will mean you're making one very long lever and you're not straining your joints. Now by keeping your palm facing down and raising your arm in this perfectly straight line, you are isolating the lateral deltoid, meaning this is going to be very hard for you to do even with light weight. Now if this movement is performed correctly, the only muscle being exercised will be the lateral deltoid. Again, a reminder, the lateral deltoid is a very small muscle, it pulls on a very long lever, and it has a very, very short active insertion. So the reason you will not see people performing this exercise is simple. It's very lightweight usually, <laughs> so very lightweight is required, and even the largest, freakiest bodybuilders and powerlifters would struggle to do this exercise with any significant amount of weight. In general, people would greatly struggle to get over 20 pounds or even 25 pounds. They, they wouldn't be able to do it. It's simply too heavy because it's the end of a very long lever and it's a very small muscle group and you're isolating it. <laughs> now, <laughs> obviously, this is not an ego-driven, ignorance-based, bro-science exercise. This is maximally using levers, physics, anatomy, and science to your greatest benefit. So, very simple, do not be like most people. Do not let ego and ignorance ruin your progress. You can try this exercise with anything. Five pound dumbbell, water bottle, brick, cinder brick, grocery bag full of sand, whatever, I don't care. You can do this and get some great lateral delts. I guarantee you, after you do five to 10 reps, you're gonna feel a burn you've never felt before, and you're gonna have to stop because you probably don't know how to get to failure. Now, if you do this exercise three times per arm and you go as far as you can, you're going to have an amazing lateral deltoid workout. It's going to be the best one you can possibly have because this is the best movement you can possibly do. Now, that covers up lateral deltoids. So, let's talk about middle trapezius. So, it seems to me that not a single person, coach, or trainer has any idea how to properly train the middle trapezius. Now the reason I'm saying this, as previously mentioned, is because most people who are attempting to work the middle trapezius with rowing motion, so bent over barbell rows, t-bar rows, cable rows, and any kind of rowing machine. Of course, these are all very ineffective movements if you're trying to train your upper back or your middle trapezius. <sighs> so here's where all the crying starts. Well, why do I know that none of these movements are effective? It's very simple. As I have said many times before, use your brain. If you would simply Google an anatomy chart, you will see that no place do your arms connect to your middle trapezius. Meaning, they don't connect. They don't touch. So, 
if your bones are levers and your goal is to move the muscles attached to those levers, then you are sadly mistaken if you think a rowing movement will produce activation in your middle trapezius. The middle trapezius connects along your scapula, as long as your spine. The origin and the insertion. The origin is on the spine, the insertion is along the outside scapular ridge. Now, notice, nowhere in there that I say upper arm or humerus, meaning they do not connect to your arms. Therefore, any arm movement will not properly or efficiently exercise them. So, here is the reason you will always see professional bodybuilders talking about feeling the muscle, feeling the squeeze. It's because around the final 10 or 15 percent of most rowing movements, if you arch your back and you squeeze everything, contract and pull your scapula back, you're able to very ineffectively, with very poor range of movement, squeeze your middle trapezius as your body then finally is in a position to retract its shoulder blades. The problem, of course, is that most people do this exercise with a lot of weight because they're morons. And therefore, they do not get the point of this. So when they try to do this, they pull this big weight up. Then, when they're trying to squeeze their back, they're really just jerking the weight with momentum, their lower back, and arching their back. They do not squeeze their upper back muscles. And just a reminder, by the way, guys, believe me, I've done plenty of photo shoots, plenty of videos, plenty of everything. The weights that they use in these photo shoots, the weights that they use in these videos, the motivational videos, these are not the weights that these bodybuilders actually train with. These are specifically for the magazines. These are specifically for the photo shoots. If the bodybuilder is training with these weights, well, they're just stupid and they have good genetics. That doesn't mean you should copy them. So... In order to basically correctly train your middle trapezius, if you're not a genetic freak, you must move only your scapula. And you must move your scapula with the correct resistance curve and to a point of full contraction, taking it full of full range of motion. So the only way that this can be accomplished is when you're training your middle trapezius, you're to set up two pulleys, one on either side of you positioned roughly 45 degrees on each side from your midline. You'll be standing roughly or sitting depending three to four feet back. So facing these pulleys you would grab a handle on each side like so and while sitting on an upright bench you put your stomach on the bench, arch your back slightly and form each arm into a 90 degree bend. Now from this position and while maintaining a rigid back you will Relax your scapula forward, it'll feel like your shoulders are slumping forward towards your chest. And then contract your scapula together without pulling with your arms. So you're only going to be pulling with your scapula. This is only possible if your humerus is in a 90 degree angle. It's also very helpful to point your toes towards each pulley on either side, both to double check the angle, make sure it's 45, as well as to brace against the resistance that'll be coming. Now, this is kind of a complicated movement to explain with words, which is why I have videos of me doing it. It's also why I'm including pictures and a few of my flashcards at the end. Um, the flashcards are for if you have a gym, also if you don't have a gym. So even if you don't have money, you can perform this exercise with literally nothing, with no money. You don't need a gym, you don't need anything. So again, exercise does not need to be complicated. And it certainly doesn't need to be difficult. And it's certainly not difficult to understand these basic principles of biomechanics. To identify the perfect exercises you need for each muscle, you simply need to have a basic understanding of biomechanics. There's absolutely no need nor reason to be doing dozens of different exercises and applying these so-called muscle confusion tactics and all this other bullshit. Circuit training and... The fuck, I, can't even, I don't even know where to start. So, you simply need one exercise per muscle group so or you call it a body part perhaps so most people train 14 major muscle groups now that means it's only 14 exercises that you need to do every week if each muscle group you do one exercise for so I mean if you're a bodybuilder that number will go up to 20 or, or 23 or or whatever but 
Other than that, power lifters and, and everybody else, again, you only need to train these, these major muscle groups and your technique. Anyone can do these things. You, you really, I mean, it drives me crazy, guys. You don't need to spend hours in the gym. You can do all of these exercises, I'm telling you, from the comfort of your home, from your backyard, from your patio. You don't need gym equipment. You don't need to hire a personal trainer. You do not need a coach. You don't need me. Well, I mean, after I make these videos and explain these things, then you don't need me. I can die, okay? You can do everything yourself. So, the point is, exercise is simple. You don't need to do 10 bicep curls, 10 different lateral exercises. This is so stupid. This is outdated thinking. It has long been proven wrong. The only reason people do these things and say these things is because, again, they are ignorant. They are what I like to call religious gym bros, meaning they rely entirely on tradition of bro science, unquestioningly not even thinking about it. Well, don't be like that. Understand exercise is simple. You don't really need anything for it. It's very fun and it's also very easy to make gains if you apply these principles simply. Now, guys, please, if you found this video helpful, give my channel a like and a subscribe. This game of life is all about percentages in the gym and in life. It's all the little percentages that add up every single day. And in order for me to grow and to help more people, I'll need your help too, guys. So please, everyone, help me get these little percentages to grow. Like and subscribe so I can educate others. Comment below for any questions that you may have. Or of course, if you'd like a video made about a topic or you have questions or you'd like my help, just go ahead and email me, uh, castlinprogress at gmail.com or go to my website, www.castlinprogress.com for more stuff. I have my book on biomechanics, proper exercise selection, training principles, self-improvement and self-help. I have many flashcards, no money exercise flashcards, running cue flashcards, the perfect resistance exercise flashcards, training manuals and books. I have written over 50 articles on my website. So many tools for you guys to download for free to help yourself. Guys, there's nothing stopping you except the limits you place on yourself. All you have to do is go to my website, download the free stuff and fill it out and start going. You don't need me, you don't need anyone. We're all in this together guys. I'm going to be doing it. I've been doing it for years and years and years. I'm going to be doing it every day until I die. I'm going to be getting better every day until I die. Now you can do it too. Hopefully you're going to do it with me. Hopefully we're going to make our lives better and make everybody else's lives better too. Now, yes you can. Now go get some guys.